So I'm going over the simple interest section tonight, and I uh, just want to talk about simple interest is. Now, interest is sort of like rent. If you, for example, you rent an apartment, you have that apartment for your contract. But of course, if you have the apartment, the person who owns it isn't able to use it under contract. So you pay them rent. So they get some kind of compensation for you using this apartment. Well, money kind of goes the same way. If you say borrow money, you take it money out of some kind of pot and it's not available for the original uh, possessor of that money to use it. So you pay rent on that money and we call that interest. Uh, other things with interest, for example, when you buy a bond, you buy a government bond, this is a way of the government to raise money. So you buy this bond, you take the certificate, and you give this money to the government. And the government's going to use the money for some kind of project. And now, of course, since the government's using the money, you're not able to use it. And eventually, you know, oftentimes, you know, you'll pay back this money after some point, but you'll be earning interest on this bond as well, sort of like the government's renting money from you, in a sense. So what's going to happen here is we're going to talk about how you calculate interest. And interest calculations are actually based on how much you've borrowed or how much someone has borrowed from you. So the simple interest formula is this. where P is what we call the principal. Now, this is how much was borrowed, or excuse me, how much someone borrowed from you or you borrowed from somebody else. It's the amount of money we're talking about. R is the interest rate. And it's given to us as a percent. We oftentimes, actually all the time, we're gonna represent it as a decimal when we do our calculations. Finally, T. T is time, and it's time that's usually in years. So um, what we're gonna be talking about with our interest rate, we'll refer to it usually as an annual interest. That means it's the interest we'll pay or somebody's going to pay us at the end of a year. And then we have the number of years that the interest will be charged. And each at the end of each year, the you, you or someone else is going to be charged this interest. So let's do a calculation here. Let's see. So let's say we have this. So let's say the principal is $2,000. The interest rate is 6%. And let's say the time is one year. Now again, for these problems, we're going to assume this is an annual rate or a yearly rate. Um, sometimes it might be, it's possible in a monthly rate, so at the end of each month you have to pay interest, but usually it's going to be yearly or annual. So let's say you want to calculate the interest. Well, first off, what we got to do, we want to convert this to a decimal. So to do that, we take our decimal point, we move it two spots to the left. So we've got that. Now next to calculate the interest, it's PRT or 2000 times 0 0.06 times one year. And if we do the calculations on that, I'm get my calculator going. So we're going to get 120 dollars. 
So that's how we do a simple interest calculation. Now, some of these will get kind of fancy. So for example, let's say we have this. So we have a principal of $8,000, an interest rate of 6.75%, and a time of three months. Now, this is still an annual interest rate. For the problems I'm looking at from the homework set, the interest rates are assumed to be annual. And we've got to do some translation here. First off, again, I represent it as a decimal. So we always move the decimal two spots to the left. So 0 0.0675. Now the time here is in months. Now this is an annual interest rate. So we only can deal in time in years. So we've got to convert months to years. So the way we do that is we have three months over 12 months. What fraction of a year is three months. Well, it's actually a quarter of a year or 0 0.25. If we think of it in terms of a fraction, three months out of one year, which is 12 months, we can reduce this to one fourth. And as a decimal, this would be 0 0.25. You can take one divided by four, you get 0 0.25. So now we finally have all of our numbers. So for the interest, so how much will you pay in interest? an annual interest, but you only borrow the money for three months. Now let's go 8,000 times 0 0.0675 times 0.25. It comes out to be $135. So if you have say fractions of a year. Now there's another kind of fraction of a year. We need to talk about two different methods of calculating this, and that's when we're given days. So first off, we have what's called the ordinary method. This is 360 days is considered one year. Now, why is this the case? Well, it has to do with the kind of history of like banking holidays and stuff like that, from what I understand. I have to double check that. Then we have the exact method. And this is when we consider 365 days is equal to one year. So typically what we're gonna do, we're going to assume the ordinary method and unless we're told to consider the exact method. So well, let's do this.
let's say we have 45 days. Now, again, this is going to be an annual interest rate. So it's designed to be for an entire year. We're expecting you to borrow the money for a year or someone's going to borrow money from you for a year. But it's not going to turn out to be for a whole year. They're going to pay it back after 45 days. So what we need to do is convert this to fraction of a year. Now let's make this into a decimal. So to do that, you can move that decimal point two spots to the left. And that's our decimal. We're going to assume the ordinary method. So that means this will be 45 days out of a 360 day year. Now you can uh, reduce this if you want. You can turn it into a decimal, I'll take 45 divided by 360. And we're going to get 0 0.125. So something I do want to warn you about, when you do these problems, if you ever do a division or multiplication and you get these long numbers, use all the digits that you can. Don't round in the middle of the problem. Wait till you've completed all the calculations and then round. And usually what you're doing is you're rounding to the nearest hundred. So that's the uh, digit, the second digit to the right of the decimal point. So something like, You're always rounding to this digit. And if you think about it in terms of dollars and cents, dollars and cents. Now, sometimes they'll say round to the nearest dollar. And then in that case, you do something like this. Or if there's a number five or greater, say number five or greater, just to the right of the decimal point, then this will bump up to a nine. So now we've got all of our pieces. Twelve thousand times point zero seven eight times zero point one two five. We multiply these together. We get 117 exactly. All right. So the next thing we're going to look at here, let's see. Let's say we're going to talk about something called maturity. So the idea of maturity is this. This is when we talk about that when at the end of the uh, time period that you've borrowed this money or someone's borrowed money from you. It's when the money is paid back plus the interest. It's money paid back with interest. So what this is, we represent it by A. So it's gonna be principal plus interest. We're putting it another way, using symbols. It'll be P plus interest I, and we have a formula for interest I. So this would be 
the maturity. What we borrowed plus the interest paid. Now, there's another way of representing this formula, and you'll see this in the text. We can take the same formula and rewrite it. So here we have P times 1. Because, well, I mean, you can always multiply something by 1. It doesn't change anything. It stays the same. So P times 1 plus PRT. So we haven't changed anything. Multiplying this by 1 doesn't affect it. But we can do this, though. Here we have two terms with something common to both of those terms. Well, this is when we can factor the P out. Because it's common to both these terms, we can also write our maturity formula like this. But either one, this one or this one, for simple interest, either one will work. So I'm going to work with this one here. So let's say we have this. Let's see, we've got this. Now, again, this is an annual interest rate. And here we have time is three years. Better convert this interest rate into a decimal. So let's say we're looking for the maturity. What do we do in this case? Well, let's use this formula. So we have P, we have R, we have T. So again, we're going to co compute what we're going to be paying back at the end of three years when we've borrowed $8,500 and we're paying interest at 6.8% per year. So let's plug in our numbers. Bigger parenthesis here. Now we want to use PEMDAS on this. So we want to do what's in the parentheses first, and then any exponents, then multiplication, then addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and then addition, subtraction, or what we call the order of operations. So let's work within the parentheses first. So we're going to go work with in the parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we have to choose. Do we do an addition first or a multiplication first? Well, in the order of operations, multiplication is always going to be first. So we'll multiply these two numbers first. Now, I'm going through some sort of painstaking steps here, and that's OK. We're going to get to some formulas later in the text where they're going to get very complicated. And so taking your, start, your time, going through each step, is not a bad idea. So now we've done our calculation. If you go 0 0.068 times 3, we get 0 0.204. Now we add 1 to this. We 
multiply by 8,500, we're going to get 10,234 exactly. And of course, in X in the uh, web assigned, you don't put a comma in there. So that's going to be your final answer. So this includes what you've borrowed plus the interest. It's not just the interest. This also includes what you've borrowed. So let's see, that might be. Take a look. Now, there's a couple other problems I do want to go over. Um, sometimes you'll be given the interest, and you have to solve for either the time or the interest rate. So there's a little bit of algebra that goes with these problems. So let's not give away everything. So suppose the interest on a $10,000 loan for five years was $450. So suppose you borrow $10,000 for five years and the interest you paid on that $10,000 was $450. What was the interest rate? So again, you borrowed $10,000 for five years. At the end of that five years, it had accumulated $450 worth of interest over the five years, I should say. So what was your interest rate? Well, let's go back to the formula for interest. It's P R T. Now in this case, we know what I is. I was 450. We know what P is. That's 10,000. And we know what T is. T is going to be five. So what we're missing is the interest rate R. So we got to find R. So taking this formula, let's plug everything in. I is 450. P is 10,000. R, we don't know. So it just stays R. And then T is 5. Now, what we can do, we can multiply the 10,000 and the 5. So we get 450 equals 50,000 times R. So now we got to solve for R. So we want to think about how we solved equations. For multiplying by 50,000, the way we get rid of that is we do the opposite of multiplication, and that's division. So we want to keep in mind, addition and subtraction are opposites, and then multiplication, we use the dot for multiplication and division are opposites. These two cancel each other, 
these two cancel each other. They'll undo what the other one's doing. So if this is trying to multiply by 50,000, divide by 50,000, and we'll cancel out that multiplication. Now, because this is an equation, what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we divide this by 50,000. Let's see what we get. 450 divided by 50,000. 0 0.009 equals. And because these canceled each other, we just left with R. Now keep in mind, this is R as a decimal. We want to convert it to a percent. So to convert it to a percent, we move our decimal two spots to the right. So if you go from percent to decimal, two spots left. From decimal to the percent, two spots right. So we'll do this, and we'll get 0 0.9 percent, very small percent. All right. It's like something, I'm not sure if this is true. I'll have to look up, but savings accounts are in very small percentages. Anyway. So the last problem I want to do is this. So let's see here. So with maturity, let's go back to maturity. Now, maturity A is how much we borrowed plus the interest that we owe. So the, what we borrowed plus the interest is what we pay back when all is said and done. And that's called a maturity. Now, sometimes you're going to have some knowledge about the maturity. You're going to have something about the principal, but you don't know anything about the interest. So let me give you an example. So let's see. So the maturity value of a three-month loan of $4,000 was $4,085. What is the simple interest? So what do we have here in this type of problem? Well, let's take a look. The maturity value of this loan, whatever, however long we've had it, that's going to be $4,000. So this is our A. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. This is our P. Pardon me, sorry. So the loan was what we borrowed. So what we borrowed was $4,000. And the maturity value of this three month loan of $4,000, that maturity value is gonna be A. So what is the simple interest? Well, using this formula for maturity, we know what A is. And we know what P is. So we can plug in those numbers. So maturity will always be how much we borrowed plus the interest we pay on what we borrowed. Now we had a loan of $4,000. So that means P is going to be $4,000. And the maturity value of this $4,000 loan, $4,005. And they're asking about the simple interest. 
So what we do here is we solve for i. Now we've got 4,000 added to the interest. What's the opposite of adding 4,000? Subtracting 4,000. Subtract 4,000 from both sides. Because what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So these will cancel out. And then what happens on the other side, it just happens. We just take what comes out of it. So 4,085 minus 4,000 is $85. And that's going to be your interest. So, okay, if you have any questions about this, let me know. And I uh, hope to hear from you soon.